A lot of people say they try to stay out of politics. In reality, it's playing more of a role in people's personal lives. Match looked at singles' views on political beliefs in 2015 before President Trump was elected. In 2017, after the midterms, and then again last year. Well, there's been a steady progression of people less willing to date someone with opposite political beliefs or that didn't have political opinions on key issues. There's even less willingness to date someone that wasn't registered to vote. This is based on an annual study called Singles in America. It looked at national samples of people of all ages, not just Match.com members. Helen Fisher is a human behavior expert and Match's chief science advisor. She says while politics matters in the beginning, once you fall in love, not so much. I think that's because you've already resolved this. You already know this person is <clears throat> gonna be different. They're not gonna change, by the way. 95% of singles have not changed their political views when in a relationship. We do not change. She says we are willing to overlook those differences because of our brain. As you get to know somebody more and more, as you fall in love with them, a whole region in the brain linked with negativity bias, remembering the negative, becomes less and less active. You overlook what you don't like about somebody and focus on what you do. It's called positive illusions. With the presidential election getting closer, Match has made some changes to help people make better politically suited connections. Now, instead of just three political view choices, members can select from nine. Well, it's a solution that many states have hoped will curb smoking habits, hiking up the taxes charged on each pack. One state is set to raise taxes to more than $4 a pack. Tomorrow, what the evidence shows about whether hiking cigarette taxes really curbs smoking. Temperatures tomorrow, that's the big story. We're stuck in the 30s all day long. It will feel more like 20 degrees. We snap back over the weekend. Look at that Sunday warmth. Rain early next week. We'll have more details straight ahead. The news continues at 6. We really respect people. Mr. Pye, and we yeah. honestly don't think he should have gotten fired. And I kind of think our school has not been the same. And we really wanted to go back to normal. Students walk out of Tri West High School a day after RTV6 aired an exclusive interview with the now former attendance secretary, David Pyatt. Pyatt shared surveillance video showing teacher Tyler Bruce in a room alone with the female student he is accused of having an inappropriate relationship with. And then, after RTV6's interview with Pyatt, the school district fired him. There's too much that's been pushed under the rug, kept in the closet out of public view, and our school board is doing nothing to help these kids. Tonight, what students and parents are feeling and how Pyatt says he is trying to make Tri-West a safer place for all students. And good evening to you at 6 o'clock. Students walk out of Tri-West High School to support fired attendance secretary David Pyatt. And this comes after RTV6 aired an exclusive interview with the now former employee. He shared surveillance video only with RTV6 showing teacher Tyler Bruce and a female student alone together in a room. Well after allegations arose that Bruce was in an appropriate relationship with that student. We actually interviewed Pyatt before he was fired. He said he is speaking out because he wants to keep all students at Tri-West safe. But one day before our story aired last night, Northwest Hendricks schools fired him in part for sharing surveillance video with RTV6. And only on RTV6, team coverage of that walkout, what students and parents are upset about and their message tonight. We begin with RTV6's Megan Sanctorum. Megan. Well, we are right across the street from Tri-West High School right now, where earlier today we watched dozens of students walk out in protest. They tell us their goal was to show support for fired attendance secretary David Pyatt. He got fired for, for trying right to, thing. yeah, keep for doing safe. the right thing and keep us safe and it's not fair. These are just some of the students taking a stand and sending a message to district leaders. He was more concerned about our safety than our administrators. They tell us they are not happy with how this whole situation has been handled. So they planned a walkout. Uh, 
everybody wanted to go out at 1025 just to like respect Mr. Pyatt. But they tell us it didn't go exactly as planned. They say before 1025, the fire alarm was pulled. I said it's an emergency fire alarm and then made all the kids go back inside and then tried blocking all of the doors saying none of us were allowed outside. There were teachers and administrators telling us to turn around, go back to class. But a group of students chose to continue with the protest. They walked out of school a few minutes later. They said that if we go outside, we have to go home. We're not allowed back at our school. A spokesperson for the district said students were allowed back inside and absences would be considered unexcused. But one student shared this video with us. She told us she tried to go back inside to get her keys, but she was not allowed. She had a respect for Pyatt shirt on. Students tell us they just don't know what else to do, and this has started to impact their day-to-day -day life at school and their ability to learn. It's just been really disturbing to see the way it's changed our school and the way it's changed people's like lives entirely. It's just kind of sad walking into a classroom and just feeling like you can't like learn because every, like the teachers and the administration is just so focused on one problem that it just kind of brings like all the students to have anxiety and pressure and it's just not a good environment. Their message for district leaders. You have to stop sweeping things under the rug. You have to start doing things that are better for our students in this community. I reached out to the district to find out why that fire alarm went off today and if it was connected to the student walkout. A spokesperson tells me that was part of a pre-planned fire drill and they say no students were ever banned from entering or exiting the building. Now I also asked about disciplinary measures for any students who participated in the walkout today, but I have not heard back. Reporting live, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. And here, Megan, at this location right down the street from Tri-West High School is Rusted Silo, a local restaurant here in town. The owner here is actually a Tri-West High School parent. His, his daughter goes to that school there, and he tells me an effort to support those students today. He offered them free lunch, and tonight he's not the only parent that we're hearing from who says he is proud of the students today. It's not a place you would typically see students during the school day. 62, 63, and 64. But on Thursday, lunch was on the house for Tri-West High School students at Rusted Southern Barbecue and Brew House in Lisden. We wanted to show the support um, for our community because there's too much that's been pushed under the rug, kept in the closet. Rob Ecker is the restaurant owner and a parent of a junior at the high school. He supports students walking out of class, showing how they feel about the school's attendance secretary, David Pyatt, getting fired. Well, I understand there were some rules that may have been broken. Um, he took a really hard stance on supporting our kids. It made it feel good to see that a lot of people who I don't even know cared this much about somebody who meant a lot to a lot of people. He would ask you how your day is going. I come in late, so I would see him every day, twice a day. I'm glad that all these people in the community are finally going to get the true reaction of how these kids feel. Tiffany Matthews is one of just a handful of parents who joined students as they walked out. That video that everybody saw last night was absolutely sickening. Matthews watched the latest Call 6 investigation where Pyatt shared surveillance video showing Tyler Bruce alone in a room with a student. And I just wish more people would start taking it seriously. It's very sad that there's you know, so many people that are still defending these people. It's disgusting. I, I've seen this young victim attacked so many times by adults, and that's just pathetic. The owner here of Rusted Silo tells me he did receive several calls today from both parents who were supportive of his decision to give out free lunch to those students, but also from parents who weren't happy. He tells me you have to stand up for what you believe in. Working for you tonight in Liston, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. Nicole, thank you. And as we mentioned, this student walkout happening a day after RTV6 aired an exclusive interview with the now former attendance secretary at Tri-West High School, David Pyatt. Pyatt spoke with Call 6 investigators 
Gates Kara Kenny talking about alleged sexual misconduct within the Northwest Hendricks school system and what he says needs to be done to better protect students. Yeah, Pyatt showed Kara the same surveillance videos that you see here that prompted him to contact authorities. Tri-West teacher and coach Tyler Bruce is charged with child seduction and obstruction of justice in connection with an alleged inappropriate relationship with a then 16-year-old student. This is surveillance video we obtained from a Tri-West attendance secretary, David Pyatt, that he says shows Bruce and the student alone together. We are blurring the student's face because she's a minor, but her parents told us that is their daughter and they want us to show this footage. The attendance secretary says he shared this video with law enforcement enforcement before Bruce was charged. In charging documents filed against Bruce, prosecutors mentioned this video and what Pyatt saw. The district fired Pyatt Tuesday afternoon after we started promoting this story and exclusive video. The school saying Pyatt confiscated confidential student information. David Pyatt has worked in law enforcement for 17 years and up until Tuesday was the attendance secretary at Tri-West High School. When we sat down with him, he was still working there. He previously had access to the school surveillance video system to track students coming in and out of the building. I used my phone to record them. The alleged victim was 16 years old at the time and a teacher's aide to Bruce. On May 2nd, as Bruce enters his office, the 16-year-old is leaving as the cameras are rolling. She returns and the two are now alone in Bruce's office. The lights go off. That's when David Pyatt walks past the office with his daughter. He goes, hey, what's going on? And it was just kind of a nervous, like, uh, this looks weird. I wouldn't be caught dead in a dark office with a, a student, especially a female. That's Coach Bruce entering the office. A similar incident happened the next day. The student goes into his office. Yes, yeah, their lights go out. What did you think when you saw that? That was just... It was just dumbfounding. We don't know what happened in that room. The cameras don't show that. We do know Bruce is accused of touching the student on several occasions when they were alone together. Court documents outline one incident in May when she was in his office and Bruce slid his hand up her dress and later that night asked why she was wearing underwear and if she had not, he could have gone further. The May 3rd video appears to show the athletic director, Nate Bagley, peek his head into the room. And you'll see when he comes out, he's kind of smiling and laughing. And he goes back in, talks again. Hyatt says this is problematic because court documents show the school became aware of the allegations months prior and Begley knew Bruce was not to be alone with that female student. And the athletic director knows they've been warned that and he's sitting there talking. Pyatt says he didn't initially report what he saw because the staff already seemed to know. But two weeks later, that changed when he had a meeting with Dean of Students Stacy Bagley. She's married to athletic director Nate Bagley. Because she divulged some things in that conversation that, um, that gave me more concern. Pyatt then contacted the Department of Child Services. What did you tell DCS when you called them? I told them that I, I suspected that there was an inappropriate relationship between the victim and Tyler Bruce. I believed that the administration was not doing their due diligence in reporting it. Shortly after Pyatt's report, we know DCS and the Hendricks County Sheriff's Office launched investigations. DCS determinations are not public record. Prosecutors criminally charged Bruce in January with child seduction and obstruction of justice. He denies the allegations. Do you think that Tyler Bruce would have been investigated by law enforcement and by the Department of Child Services had you not made that report? No, oh, not a chance. Former Tri-West principal Adam Benner was also charged with failing to make a report about the matter. Pyatt says Benner blew him off when confronted about Bruce. He told me, Dave, we've turned over every stone so you can know and rest assured that we found no wrongdoing. And I said, it's actually the opposite. I said, with everything I know that he isn't, it proves you're not doing everything you're supposed to do. 
When the allegations came to light last summer, the school board kept Bruce on paid administrative leave. This despite then superintendent Mike Springer's recommendation to fire Bruce. Springer told us, I am grateful to Dave Pyatt for his commitment to exposing the truth surrounding this situation. Mr. Pyatt's reaction and response to what he saw and heard in May 2019 was the reaction and response that Tri-West administrators should have had, but did not have, and to my knowledge, still have not had. Springer also put Stacy and Nathan Bagley on leave back in July for how they handled the Bruce matter, but the board voted in September to let them return to their positions, despite Springer's recommendation to fire them. Springer resigned amidst conflict with the school board over the Bruce matter. The district now has an interim superintendent. Pyatt says he saved the surveillance video and shared it with law enforcement because he did not trust the district to preserve the footage. When we sat down with Pyatt, he agreed the school might terminate him for sharing the video with us. You know you could get fired for speaking out. If they fire me, they fire me. But it, our ki this will happen again to our children if I don't speak up. The public will know this isn't just rumors of what's going on. I saw it with my own eyes. In charging documents filed against Bruce in January, Hendricks County prosecutors mentioned David Pyatt and this surveillance video. The teen in this video has since left Tri-West. Her family says she was treated poorly when the allegations came to light. We talked to her mom, Stacy Lewis, back in August when they filed a tort claim alleging the school district failed to protect their daughter. The parents of this community, they should be gravely concerned about what's going on right now at the school and, and the changes that haven't been made to stop another Tyler Bruce. The Federal Office for Civil Rights is currently investigating the Northwest Hendricks School Corporation for how it handles sexual harassment allegations. Pyatt says the district also needs to do a full investigation into who knew about Bruce and the now 17-year-old student and didn't report it. What's your biggest fear? That this continues and gets worse and my biggest fear, I have two daughters. In, one's in elementary and one's in primary school. And to me, if we don't change the culture, then it's just gonna, it's gonna happen again. On February 28, Nate and Stacy Bagley were placed on paid administrative leave with the school district in light of a complaint filed by the Indiana Department of Education. IDOE is seeking to suspend their teaching licenses for failing to properly report sexual misconduct allegations involving Bruce. Former Tri-West principal Adam Benner resigned last year, and the state has filed a complaint against his teaching license as well. The Bagleys and Benner have not responded to our repeated requests for comment. Back to you. Our Kara Kenny there. Well, back in mid-February, we asked the school district to speak with us on camera, but they instead provided a statement, quote, we have not viewed the video in question, but believe the video is part of an ongoing criminal case and or contains information subject to student privacy laws. Northwest Hendricks School Corporation has been and will continue to fully cooperate with law enforcement and the Hendricks County prosecutor to assure justice is served in a court of law and not the court of public opinion, end quote. And then yesterday, just before RTV6 aired this story, received yet another statement from the school district saying airing the surveillance video quote exploits a young woman end quote we at rtv6 want to be clear the student's family wanted us to show you the footage and we blurred her identity you can read this district's entire statement right now on the indychannel.com and on the rtv6 app tyler bruce is now on unpaid suspension and the board is taking steps to fire him he has denied the allegations and has not responded to our repeated requests for comment Highs in the 30s, wind chills in the teens, and a return to some rain and even snow overnight. There's that mix of rain and snow changing to snow showers for your Friday morning. We'll talk about the potential impact there and look at the change over the weekend coming up. It's a better than a sandwich, Papa John's. And welcome back to the news at 6, just about 618. North of Indy, we've had some very light showers move through. It's a thin line. Took a hunk out of the temperatures in Peru and uh, Tipton. They're in the 40s. The rest of central Indiana into the 50s on this mild day. There is the sharp cloud cover line out in Hendricks County, west side of Marion County. Sun already coming back out temporarily. There's a shower on the southern end of Morse, uh, really between Cicero and Noblesville. Fisher, Fisher's with some 
very light showers as well. That stretches up I-69 all the way toward Fort Wayne. That's kind of the first little band of rain. Look at the circulation here. That will spin some snow showers into the state for the morning hours. It will also pull the colder temperatures into the Midwest. 2 a.m., a rain-snow mix. This will all be very light. 4 a.m., still a little rain-snow mix changing, I think, to snow showers and flurries around 7 a.m. That will continue through the morning hours. I'd say through at least noon we'll have some flurries. Temperatures in the 30s. You've got to wear your winter coat, but it's not really the 30s that you need to dress for. You need to dress for this. Temperatures that will be in the teens as far as wind chills. The wind again will gust over 30 miles per hour through the day tomorrow, and those wind chill temperatures change only slightly through noon. Coldest day in the entire seven day planner tomorrow. We bounce back quickly over the weekend and significantly Sunday's high at 60. It's all about the wind and colder temperatures though next 24 hours. Wind gusts 30 to 35 during the afternoon hours. Temperatures no warmer than mid 30s to the north middle to upper 30s the rest of central and southern Indiana. As you go to the weekend, as we mentioned, temperatures will be warmest for the second half of the weekend. The change arrives Monday. That's with rain and 58 degrees. There's still a chance of showers Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but low chances for rain. But notice the consistently above average temperatures. Dave? So the calendar guys says March, but the look at West Lafayette looks so oh, I don't much later than that. Spring football, yep. Purdue has started up, pads popping and more. Great to see number four out there, wide receiver Rondale Moore. Missed much of last season with that hamstring injury. We'll hear from him tonight on the news at 11 o'clock. Hey, good evening to you. Speaking of Purdue, no one's won more at the Big Ten women's tourney than the Boilers. And this afternoon, their 2020 run began back at a place where they won so many times before. Brad Brown with more as the Boilers hope to rekindle some old memories at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. The noon start time was not too early for Purdue on Thursday. The Boilermakers got up to a fast start in their matchup against Michigan State. Five different players scored during a 13-3 run in the opening quarter that gave Purdue an early double-digit lead. They kept it going with a trio of three-pointers in the second as the lead got as high as 14 points before halftime. Don't you think when we get off to a good start, it kind of builds the momentum for the rest of the game, and we just kind of kept the momentum going, and we um, fought hard together. It was just a lot of fun. You saw all the smiles out there, and people knocking down shots, and people stepping up, and it was just a really great game for us today. McLaughlin scored 17 points to lead the Boilers. Ariana Harris and Dominique Oden each added 15. The lead was 15, heading to the fourth quarter. MSU made a surge in the final five minutes, got it down to a six-point margin, but Purdue was able to put it away. 20 assists on 27 field goals by the time it was done and a 72-64 win to advance. We were just due to really connect and, and play well and then, you know, we wanted to get the ball inside immediately and we did our first probably eight points, um, got inside, so that just really elevated the confidence. Uh, but that's all we talked about is um, building confidence in the defense today. So Purdue's win moves them on to face the top seed Maryland in Friday's quarterfinals. That half of the bracket also includes number four seed Indiana. The Hoosiers coming on off a record-setting season that saw them win 13 conference games, 23 victories overall. Right now, I think we are, we're, we're headed up, and I think that's the best time to be headed up. And um, I think a big part of that is, again, our confidence. I feel like everyone's playing with confidence. You know, it always comes back to the team, right? The team, the team, the team. And, um, and that's what we talk about. You know, we talk that, uh, you know, it's been a, a great, um, you know, you go to the non-conference and the Big Ten season, um, and now it's a new conference. You know, we have an opportunity to win a championship. And by the way, if Purdue and Indiana both win Friday, they would go head-to-head -head in Saturday's semifinal. At Bankers Life Fieldhouse, Brad Brown, RTV6 Sports. All right, fine tonight. First and foremost, from the west side, the Patriots may have lost in Milwaukee last night, but this was a win. Honored to be a part of the team's all-star reading team, reading the second and third graders at Clarence Farrington School 61 this morning. And our reading timeout. Very cool. Freddie Fever, the special guest, making memories and encouraging reading this morning. Very cool. The News of Six continues after this. Stream it live on CourtTV.com. A little burst of sunshine before sunset. Very cold tomorrow. Great view there. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. We'll see.